So, enormous news today on the IndyCar front. For the first time in 19 years, come 2023, IndyCar is going to have a standalone video game. Of course, the last one uh, was out in 2004. It was called IndyCar 2005, and it was based on the 2003 season. Um, but it's been a long time. And Motorsport Games, who recently acquired the uh, NASCAR uh, license and will be producing their first ground-up game this year. Uh, they also own the R-Factor Racing Simulator, uh, will be producing this game. Um, and if you've ever played R-Factor, uh, I, I, in my opinion, uh, there are some good things uh, to come. Obviously, we're going to have to see with the NASCAR game, uh, but... Uh, I really struggled with like how am I going to start this video because one of the things that I've been asking for for the longest time and one of the things I thought that IndyCar Racing has needed for the longest time is a video game. They need to, one of the biggest things IndyCar fails to do is get the young people involved whether it's through social media presence, whether it's through uh, outreach programs, whether it's through just promoting the sport in a way that reaches uh, the certain demographic that is currently embracing Formula One and to a lesser extent NASCAR in a much bigger way. One of those ways uh, for them to do it was a standalone video game and that now exists. And so thinking about it, um, in this decade, this is to me the third biggest thing that has happened to IndyCar racing. Um, in terms of its growth. The first one was obviously Penske buying the whole enchilada, the Speedway in the series. Um, and I think in a lot of ways, had Penske not bought it, we would still be in video game limbo. Um, I did know that uh, Roger was watching a lot of the iRacing races uh, over the lockdown last year. So uh, it seems like uh, uh, there may have been finally some skulls cracked uh, around the Penske Entertainment front, and, and this finally got done, which is fantastic. The second one is Alonso coming to Indy. I mean, that did extreme amounts of good for not only the exposure of the series, but the prestige of the series um, and the Indianapolis 500. And then it's this video game, as far as I'm concerned. And let me explain why. Um I obviously talked already about the fact that this is going to market the series to the younger demographic. Like, the fact that uh, a, a person could pick up and play this, especially a kid, or get it given to them as a Christmas gift or a birthday gift, um, and be able to race against Alexander Rossi and Colton Herta and Alex Pillow and Scott Dixon um, and all the other drivers in the IndyCar series and learn about the sport, go to tracks and, and have a favorite track or a favorite driver or a favorite livery, um, find out what it's like to, to race in the Indianapolis 500, bump day, what is that all about? All these sort of things, that, that learning experience. Uh, but more importantly, and what has changed so significantly since uh, the last IndyCar video game is that there is now a, I don't even want to call it a cottage industry because it's really not. There is big business in people playing video games for a job and people watching that, consuming that content, and uh, being influenced by that content. Let me give you an example. When this IndyCar game drops in 2023, um, I, I came up with three names that I think are absolutely going to play this game and generally don't make IndyCar-related content. Now, this is where their subscribers are right at this very moment. Uh, chances are in two years, unless they iDubs themselves, they are going to have significantly more. Jimmy Broadbent, uh, 717,000 uh, or 700,000, 17,000 uh, subscribers. Almost, he'll probably be at a million in 2023. I always screw up this name, and if I had trouble saying uh, uh, Jimmy Broadbent's subscriber count, I'm going to have trouble saying this. Tiedemann Marduk, 630,000 uh, 630, subscribers. Ereva, 542,000 subscri subscribers. Now I said it right. Um, these are significant numbers. Like these, these people have subscriber numbers that rival sometimes the NBC Sports Network uh, TV ratings, right? So even them getting a quarter of that, if they get a hundred thousand people watching an IndyCar game uh, on YouTube, that's going to be 
sales, especially if the game is good, but it's also going to be exposure for IndyCar. And just in that market alone, if you consider what an IndyCar game has kind of been missing out on by not existing, it's been the fact that these people that I just mentioned, who have over half a million subscribers on YouTube, um, now Broadbent's a little bit different, but the other guys, they got to that point by playing F1 video games on their couch and recording it and putting it up on YouTube. Careers were literally made from the F1 game. And to a lesser extent, careers have literally been made from the NASCAR games. Um, I know my channel, one of the things that grew it significantly in the early days was playing NASCAR video games. This is something that truly does work and truly does not only create uh, new content creators in the motorsport um, arena, but uh, it allows people to have careers. And it, it this is legitimate stuff. So it's this is, uh, again, this is a lot bigger than I think a lot of people are going to give it credit for. And I think a lot of people have been so dismissive of video games uh, simply because IndyCar really hasn't existed in the video game market as it currently exists. So let's take a look at the press releases um, from Motorsports Games and uh, IndyCar. So this is actually the IndyCarGame.com site. Um, and there's not much there. I should have had this up to begin with, but whatever. We'll just go with it. If I didn't cut for the to say the, the subscriber counts for Broadbent wrong, uh, we're just going to keep going with it. So obviously Alex Pillow, the NTT data car, no surprise there. It's the NTT IndyCar series. And really there's nothing else on this website right now. Um, and I'm sure there's not a whole lot uh, to this game right now. The only thing is you can uh, sign up to re uh, receive uh, the latest updates about the IndyCar game. I've already done this. And then there's some, some stuff that links to other uh, IndyCar site things. Um, but let's actually read the press release, which comes from Motorsport Games themselves. Uh, Miami, Florida, January 15th, 2021. Uh, a leading Motorsports Games, Inc., a leading racing game developer, publisher, and esports ecosystem provider of official motorsport racing series throughout the world, announced today that it has entered into gaming and esports licenses. The esports license was entered with an intent by the parties to, uh, to form a license uh, exclusive relationship uh, of esports with the IndyCar series events. So that's important, by the way. So Motorsports Games uh, is the official esports partner now of IndyCar. iRacing, out the door. Now, another thing is that this to me is a red flag. Why is it a red flag? We saw in the past, especially with the NASCAR Heat Games under the 704 Games banner, is that they devoted so much time to esports that a lot of things um, in the regular game suffered. And this this isn't a wish list video yet. Uh, that is coming, uh, but that, this isn't it. But one thing that I would say is you have to nail the core gameplay first, and the esports will come later. If you focus this, if you make this an esports title first, you have failed. It has to be a game that is pick up and play. It doesn't mean it's, a, it's an arcade game, but it has to be a game that everybody is going to enjoy right out the bat. And if it's a competitive, fun game that when you tell the car to do something, it does it and reacts similarly to what you see in real life. If the results of the races are similar to what you see in real life, you will then have an esports ecosystem. But you can't start out with it as far as I'm concerned. The debut title is expected to launch in 2023 on Xbox and PlayStation consoles as well as PC. Fantastic. A console game, again, th this is exactly what we're looking for. Xbox, PlayStation, you want it on the Xbox and PlayStation stores. If somebody's scrolling through the games looking at new uh, the new titles or looking at racing games, this one will be one of the ones that people will consider. Um the partnership additionally includes an esports agreement that could kick off as early as this year. Now, why would it kick off as early as this year? I've already mentioned. Uh, Motorsports Games owns R Factor, um, and R Factor is really a modding title. So all they have to do is mod a, an IndyCar into R Factor, and boom, you've got your IndyCar esports ready to go. Details on competitions that will feature NTT IndyCar Series athletes are expected to be announced at a later date. So we'll see. I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be involving R Factor. 
Motorsports Games and IndyCar are thrilled to provide fans with a long overdue dedicated gaming experience, says Dimitri, Dimitri Cox, Costco. I hope I said that right. Sorry, Dimitri. CEO of Motorsports Games. After decades of world-class racing, we cannot think of a more deserving uh, league for a video game franchise. IndyCar shares our commitment to bringing authentic experiences to motorsport racing enthusiasts. Fans can anticipate the NTT IndyCar series to meet the same level of excellence and immersive gameplay uh, they expect from motorsports games. Now, one thing I do want to say is that uh, from an v- actual like game game perspective, we really don't have a lot to work with right now on what exactly we can expect from motorsport games. Um, as of the time of recording, we do not have uh, the NASCAR game that they have built from the ground up. We've seen a couple of screenshots. It looks pretty good, but uh, it just visually looks good. We've seen no gameplay yet. Um, but I will say this, that one of the things that IndyCar has to its advantage is NASCAR gets to be the guinea pig, or maybe the crash test dummy, wink, wink, uh, for the next couple of years uh, with motorsports games. And a lot of the problems hopefully will kind of be uh, sussed out by the NASCAR game that uh, by the time the IndyCar game comes around in 2023, uh, there will be a pretty solid uh, base platform. Uh, Our partnership with Motorsports Games will bring the fierce competition of the NTT IndyCar series to a global gaming audience hungry for motorsports content, says Mark Biles, president and CEO of Penske Entertainment. And uh, yes, I think Mark definitely, uh, if he reads Twitter, uh, he's definitely seen my tweets. He's probably seen IndyCar and NBC's tweets. A lot of people make a lot of noise about the video games for the last two years. So thank you, Mark. Um, Like the talent and depth of our field, IndyCar's universe continues to expand and grow rapidly. Motorsports Games is an industry leader with a track record of innovation. We know our fans will have 2023 in the debut of the new NTT IndyCar Series video game circled on their calendars. And absolutely right. Mark is absolutely right. Um, This is going to be exciting. And this is going to be a two-year process of anticipation, uh, certainly on my channel. Motorsports Games Relationships with IndyCar will produce a brand new franchise that has been eagerly anticipated by racing and gaming fans alike. IndyCar's bold, audacious, and unapologetic style of racing is primed for a video game franchise built entirely around its expanding brand. North America's premier open-wheel racing series features a growing roster of young stars and talented veterans with global name recognition. These daredevil athletes compete across a uniquely challenging and diverse set of ovals, road, and street circuits. I'm super excited for our fans to be able to bring the NTT IndyCar series into their homes with a new video game franchise, an Aero McLaren SP driver, Pato Award. This is such a great opportunity for fans to connect to our series even more, from watching us on the weekends to playing us on their favorite tracks whenever they want. And yeah, Pato's nailed it. And in fact, the last, last line nails it. Um, we're going to have road and street circuits, we're going to have ovals, um, and it's going to be a challenge. There's no doubt about it for motorsport games to get this right because uh, at, you know the last IndyCar game, uh, the modern IndyCar game, because of course IndyCar Evolution or Indy 500 Evolution came after that. Um, but the last uh, modern IndyCar game, IndyCar 2005, which was based on the 2003 season, it was released in 2004. Really weird, but um, that game was all ovals. So this game is going to have a much bigger challenge because you're going to not only have to get the the oval physics right, but you're also going to have to get the road and street circuit physics right. You're going to have to scan or create new tracks like Detroit, St. Petersburg, which I don't know if is really in any video game. I know it's like an old F1 challenge mod that was eventually moved over to the first R Factor, um, but that's like the last St. Petersburg track that I can even remember existing in sim racing. So they're going to have to go ground up for some tracks like that. Nashville Street Circuit, that's another one that's being currently built in IndyCar Racing too, but I don't think that's going to be able to transfer over uh, to the new IndyCar game. But I think this is extremely, extremely exciting from that perspective. And again, this is why it's exciting. IGN, um, which has 15 million subscribers on YouTube um, and obviously is one of the uh, leading gaming publications. Um, there's not much else here. Um, it's the same statement uh, from Dimitri. Um, in fact, I'm trying to see if there's actually any kind of uh, uh, extra information here. Not really. Uh, but I think it's just important that, that publications like IGN are covering this. And they will eventually, you know, in 2023, do a review uh, on their channel, which is going to have a, a bazillion subscribers. So final thoughts on this for today. Um, 
I hope that it comes out um, early 2023. I hope that 2022 is the development year. It's going to be tough because I think they're going to... I hope they don't rush it, but I also think that they've got a great base with the R-Factor physics, um, and they're going to have some experience building a game from the ground up already with the NASCAR franchise. Uh, But I would think that this game will have the most success if it releases right before the first race of the season in 2023 and has that uh, lead time to promote all the way up to the Indy 500. Uh, Because I think your sales, most of the sales are probably going to come in the month of May, um, and I would hope that it would be May of 23 and not May of 24 when those sales come for this game's sake. But uh, I think it would obviously be based on the 22 season, so the upcoming season we're going to see. Um, and that also means that the hybrid engines won't be in this uh, first iteration of the game, which is probably fine. Um, I think in some ways people will probably want to play with the old cars anyway. Um, but I think, uh, again, it's a huge day for the sport. It's a huge day for IndyCar racing, and the next couple of years are going to be very interesting uh, before this game comes out. And, and again, I think, you know, it's it's hard to, uh, I, I think some people are going to understate this, but I'm going to try to overstate it to balance it out. I think this is a significant, significant development. Is it is it going to have the impact that maybe an IndyCar game in like 2013 would have had? No. I think that um, in some ways that IndyCar has missed a little bit of the boat in terms of um, the true video game like Boom, especially like with Twitch and YouTube. But I still think it's a significant enough audience and there's a significant enough interest and desire for something like this that it is going to be successful, granted it being a good solid game from the ground up. And that's, you know, again, fingers crossed. Uh, I'll try to cover a little bit harder this NASCAR game from Motorsports Games, now knowing that uh, we're going to have an IndyCar game from this publisher coming soon. So look for videos on that game uh, whenever it comes out uh, to this channel, and we'll kind of judge accordingly as to kind of our, our expectations, or we'll reset our expectations for the IndyCar game from that. So, big, big day. Um, And there's even some more tin top news, which I may be talking about later today in another extra bonus video. Double upload. (laughs) Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm so excited. I I genuinely am. Uh, Thank you guys for more motorsport content, IndyCar content, and IndyCar video game content. This has been David Land on YouTube. We'll see you in the next video.